Hey you guys, so I just had um my first three hour delivering session from somebody with somebody from Dan Duvall's uh deliverance ministry, bride ministries, and I'm not really doing this video to like come on here and talk about her. It's not that, it's just I do feel better. Uh I got some some relief, I got some deliverance, but um to be completely honest with you, and I, this is just me speaking, and I don't, I don't say this to discourage any of you who want to go forward with somebody who is assisting others in deliverance ministry at some point in the future. This is just for me. This is my opinion. It may be different for y'all because y'all could possibly still be babes or y'all could still be inexperienced in all of those spiritual things. So coming to somebody like that who actually has the experience and the knowledge could help you. I don't really need all that. My experience in deliverance uh, sessions with people like this, I was trying to get deliverance from uh, certain fragments and altars and the plethora of things that God has shown me in dreams I know for a fact that I'm dealing with. And um, from my experience, the protocol always seems to be these other deliverance ministers going over steps with you that you honestly could do by yourself. And especially if you're putting your money, you're investing money into... A deliverance minister I just wanted to kind of throw that out there they're probably gonna have a lot of prayers and a lot of renunciation or warfare prayers that you could you could do yourself so it almost kind of feels like you're just kind of paying somebody to partner with you which you could have done by yourself I'm just being honest I mean unless something more comes out of this session I didn't really get anything out of this I chose a three-hour one and because I wanted to allow the Lord as much space and room as possible to get as much done and really nothing got done. And I've just kind of come to the conclusion for me, at least for right now, maybe the Lord could change it in the future. I just, I'm pretty much just done. I'm done trying to get deliverance. I'm done seeking deliverance. I'm done going to people for deliverance. And it actually is things I do specifically deal with, but it just... I've just kind of experienced a different range of different things from the people that I've gone to. I've experienced uh, some just don't even care about you at all, personally. They probably only care about the craft or the actual ministry part of it. There's no real love or compassion for the person that they're helping um, to really invest in you like that. They don't have the love of God in them, basically. Uh, just the strategy in the name of Jesus will be assisting you with that person. I've experienced that. I've experienced... Um, my opinion if you have a deliverance minister that you paid for deliverance there's really no way of telling unless you have really strong discernment whether this person cares about you or not because to be honest if i was charging you 250 or 20 dollars i would give you my time and energy too because for me it's a job it's not about ministry for me and sometimes you can pick up on that and um i just i just you know i nothing bad happened it's just nothing bad it's just i'm just done because I've, I've i've done this three times i've had three different deliverance sessions with this type of thing and i'd never get any type of like not what i was expecting to happen and i don't know what that means for me i don't know if the lord wants me to work at it by myself maybe he wants to train me in this and i'm my own guinea pig i don't know maybe i'm my own preparation for my ministry that could very well be the case. I just don't see the point in going to somebody to help you with something unless you are in this like extreme desperate need. And the Lord is like, go here. You know, like... <sighs> I just don't like being in those situations where like you see all these other people getting free from this person and then you go and nothing like that happens for you and it was kind of just like a waste of time and a waste of money if you put money into that. So I'm just kind of tired of going through that. Like, I, I guess I'm a dramatic person. Well, y'all know that I'm dramatic, but I'm just saying like, I always expect a dramatic manifestation. I always expect a dramatic, like, I want the Lord, Lord to come through and like manifest miracles. Like I just want, like, I feel like a lot more free and something definitely got broken off of me, but the way it was done, it was something I could have done by myself, how that went about in that part of the session. So it's just kind of like, I'm done. It's, uh, I just, 
I'm gonna just leave it alone. I don't know what else to say. And I, I feel like I should say this. Not to talk about her at all. I, I'm not. That's not where this is coming from. Just so y'all know. I know that there is a lot of Christians who the Holy Spirit has not dealt with yet about the nail polish and the cosmetics and things, and things of that sort. So I would just be leery. Only because I know, and the Lord has taught me personally, that when you have Christians that are wearing stuff like that, or that we're partaking in stuff like that, they those people do have open covenants with, with Jezebel and certain spirits like that. So it's all a matter of who you want to choose to help you, or who you want to fellowship with, I'm just saying. Some people, the Lord just hadn't dealt with them about it yet. There could definitely be that, but that does not change the fact that they still have open covenants, and they are in agreement with the cursed items. That's, that's always going to be a fact, regardless of who knows what. The lady who helped me was from Dan Duvall's uh, Bride Ministries ministry, and it could very well be true that Dan doesn't know. I, I personally, I think it's kind of ironic how you could, how we can be so invested in, in a ministry dealing with super spiritual things, and for some reason the Holy Spirit has not alerted these people that we should be wearing these things because uh, that's an open door for spirits of occult and divination and all this other Jezebel, you know. So it's just kind of. I don't get that at all, to be honest with you. I feel like the for those of us sisters who the Lord has already taught that stuff, we're not even in ministry and God already dealt with his, a lot of his daughters about that stuff, you know, and convicting us to head cover and convicting us to discontinue wearing certain things. So it just kind of mind boggles me that people in ministry don't know this stuff. But she is on his team as one of his coaches. I'm not going to say what her name was, but that is the lady that I went to and she had black nail polish on. There was something in me when I was talking to her, I wanted to say something about it so bad, but to be honest with you, I just didn't want to waste my time, because I just kind of felt like, <sighs> I already wasn't getting much out of the session anyway, she definitely felt more like a coach than a sister. I cannot judge or determine her born again experience, she could very well be a sister in Christ, but she gave me vibes of like a pagan witch. Just, I don't know if that's her background, but, uh, and she was very comfortable. It was, it was black. It was black nail polish. Now, <laughs> we already know nail polish is from the Marine Kingdom, period, okay? For those of you sisters who already know that stuff. But I'm just saying, if a sister in Christ got on with you and was wearing black, I think alarms would go off for anybody. Because it's just kind of like, okay, you didn't choose pink, you didn't choose red, you chose black. So I'm very curious as to why that's a... And, you know, I, I'm really good with reading people's body language. And I could just tell by her mannerisms and her body language and, you know, how they do the hands. Like, you know, she looked like a witch. She looked like, I'm not saying she is a witch. She was very vocal about helping me, using the blood of Jesus and all that stuff. I'm just saying the way she was carrying herself with her hands and just, she looked like somebody that probably had a pagan past or... She just gave me vibes of somebody that you would watch on YouTube who has a channel about how to do crystals. Like, and she was wearing black nail polish. And this is one of Dan Duvall's coaches on his team that I literally just got out of a deliverance session with for three hours. Um, I have several issues with that. Number one, obviously, Dan Duvall being the head of the ministry, it just kind of makes me question. And there's already some stuff out about Dan uh, people who used to work with him in ministry are out exposing him that he's doing Christian witchcraft. I cannot speak on that and I don't want anything I say in this video to attribute to that because that's not what this is for. I have no way of knowing what Dan is doing that could possibly be witchcraft in his ministry. I'm just saying. As a head, it makes me question your discernment when you are selecting people to be on your team or to be a part of your ministry. Yeah, I don't have to see her wear black nail polish to discern that something about her is pagan or something is a little off. Because the the black nail polish is just the manifestation of what's already going on in here, okay? That's all that is. I don't have to see that. But if she's wearing it like that loosely and comfortably around him, or if he's met her before, that lets me know that Dan didn't see an issue with putting somebody like that on his team for Christians to come to. So I just... I didn't say anything to her because to be honest I was just I don't like confrontation <laughs> I just people you know when we're dealing with certain covenants and certain spirits honey they got a hold on us as Christians and we're wearing this stuff comfortably you get very defensive when somebody comes at you and tries to correct you or rebuke you about it so 
I didn't want to go through that whole thing. I didn't feel like it was the right context to do it. Although I think with the Holy Spirit, there's never a right context to correct another sister about that. But maybe I should have called her out on it. I don't know. Because there has to be some conviction there. Even if you're going to choose to wear nail polish, why are you wearing black? Like, what is it about black that's making you? And it wasn't even just the black nail polish. Like I said, it's the way she was carrying herself with her body language and her hand movements. Like the way she was explaining the process, the deliverance process, she just, she felt it's like you're talking about Jesus, but she felt like a pagan witch, which pagans are different from actual like Satanists. It's not the same branch. So if you look up pagans, they're more earthy, you know, crystal, they're the more the earth type, you know, uh, she just felt like that type of woman. I didn't feel like she was a sister in Christ. I felt no connection with her. And it's a possibility Dan just picks up anybody to have as a coach. And you know, I just, I, I'm just telling y'all what I felt, okay? I just went through with it because I was, I prayed over this session like five times. Me and Mel prayed yesterday for the Holy Spirit to just take complete control over her vessel and to use her how he wants to. Nothing came out of this. So I guess for me, that's just, maybe the Lord is just wants me to do this by myself or He's shown me other people that he's going to use to help me with my altars and fragments, but it was not in the room of deliverance ministers. It wasn't that. It was just other people, relationships. And Mel is actually one of those relationships that he showed me in a dream because me and her deal with the same thing. But I just wanted to put that out there because, and that's, I feel like this is going to do some damage to his ministry, and I don't want this to be slanderous at all, but that's a problem, okay? That's that's not okay. That, that This just, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. I'm going to just let y'all do your own little judgments and stuff, but that's just like, I'm more bothered by the fact that she felt like a pagan witch than she did a sister in Christ, than the black nail polish. I mean, that definitely played a part, and the whole time she's talking to me, I just kept looking at her hands like, I just want to know why as a woman of God, like, I don't understand. Help me understand someone who has the Holy Spirit, who's part of the kingdom of light. What is it that's drawing you to wear black nail polish as a, a deliverance minister at that? That that doesn't make any sense to me. I know what could draw us to it. <laughs> we could have some parts in us or something still in us that's still yoked to some spirit or some covenant that's making you wear that. And that's, well, that's why I said he just picks up anybody that's kind of what it looks like or maybe he doesn't have discernment himself and that's gonna bother me because if you're the head of a ministry let me stop y'all know where i'm going with this i just um i'm personally done i'm not going to any more deliverance ministers on youtube on i'm not going anywhere uh from now on i will just take knowledge and i will learn from dan duvall's uh videos uh he helps other people dramatically with the same things that I deal with I guess I will just take what he their experiences and I'll take notes from it and I have all the stuff written down the dreams of the Lord gives me and I, I am skilled in dream interpretation for me <laughs> not for everybody else Cause people keep asking me to interpret their dreams I can't do that but uh, I will just try my best to break it down I have the gift of intercession and if I need to write a prayer for myself and create my own prayers and target and hit those spots myself without the assistance of somebody else and I'll just have to do that and then I'll just come and give it to y'all freely okay <laughs> I'll give you the prayers freely I'll give you all those nuggets okay but um I'm just this is where I close the door to seeking or pursuing any type of help for deliverance ministry I'm not going to sit here and say that it's something that everybody can do by themselves because I personally don't believe that. But I would say at least try to get as much work done between you and the Holy Spirit alone. Ask him to teach you and to train your hands for war and to train your hands for deliverance for yourself before you go to somebody else. Unless the Lord just really wants to use somebody, okay? So... And that's not coming from me having to pay anything. I don't agree with that either. It's just I'm more disappointed by the lack of effectiveness. It doesn't have any real, nothing comes out of it. Like you did all that for a slight difference, a slight little feeling better, which was something you could have done by yourself. And you also have to consider when you have somebody partnering with you, deliverance minister or not, this has to be somebody that's on one accord with you. So 
you you may be chancing and risking you know working with somebody who's assisting you in deliverance that doesn't care about you at all and like i said if you're dealing with somebody who's charging for deliverance ministry there's no way of telling whether they care about you because for them it may not be about a ministry it could be their job okay so they're going to stick with you for that because you already put 250 in their pocket so we doing the three hour session you know but it's so it's just like I want to so I want to say so bad I wouldn't waste my time. I don't want to say that. I have to be very careful with my words because Father is definitely in deliverance ministries and He's using them. But I just you have the same authority and power in yourself as a Christian. Okay, just try to get as much work done with you. And there's probably going to be a lot that you can't get done by yourself. And the Lord is going to reveal the relationships and the godly soul ties and possible ministers that He's going to use to assist you in those parts. But Get as much as you can get done by yourself. Write all those dreams down that you keep dreaming and, and uh, ask the Holy Spirit to give you the gift of interpretation and to just, you know, give you revelation about those dreams and those symbols and try to get some stuff done by yourself before you go to somebody else. Just it, it will just save you the disappointment, expecting more to come out of a session and nothing does or you're ex expecting to manifest a certain way and like other people you've seen in their videos and you don't and it's just kind of like you, you just get your hopes up for a big bowl of nothing and i just don't i don't know y'all that's me like i said but uh i mainly wanted to make the video to uh, address that lady man like i I wouldn't lie to y'all. I'm not saying I'm not saying she's a witch. She got that vibe about her. Um, I I mean I'm not saying she's a witch in the sense that I believe she's fraudulent. I don't believe that. I believe that. I don't know where he picked her up from. I don't know where her background is. I did not ask her. It just feels and looks like. You know how people, you probably seen like pagans on YouTube videos. They just have that vibe about them. The way they talk really comfortably about their craft and you know mother nature she had that thing going on and the black nail polish didn't help at all she just kind of felt like a goth i don't even want to say deliverance minister <laughs> she just felt like i mean i think i already said it all like i i don't i don't want to slander her i don't want to like i'm not trying to do that but uh Something ain't right over there. Something's not... I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, and uh, I just I just don't want to say too much to downplay her. Because I'm not trying to do that. I don't feel like she deserves that. But there's just a lot of stuff that was coming up and that she was saying that I don't deal with at all. The main things I did bring up that I know for a fact I'm dealing with that the father has confirmed repetitively that I deal with we didn't even touch on I had to kind of reintroduce it and we finally got the soul tie covered and broken that I mentioned to y'all we'll see how that manifests later on because this guy likes to hoover and stalk me he's probably watching this video right now but um after we got you know got the soul tie thing covered I felt something break off of me I feel a lot lighter but that was like the only success I had throughout that entire session for three hours. Everything else that she kept saying she saw or that the Lord was showing her was stuff I did not resonate with at all and I, I don't deal with. I don't say that to insult her. I'm just saying like and I, I was telling her because she was asking me, do you see anything? And I'm like, no, did nothing. I don't deal with any of that stuff. And it just kind of made me feel like, you know, she felt like she felt like a psychic. It just, and I even had a thought in my mind. I was like, I don't know what you're seeing, but it's not from the Lord. <laughs> like, I I didn't know what she was talking about. She was saying the Lord showed her like a, that I had a male protector with three different altars. And I'm like, no, there ain't no man up in here. That's for sure. So it was, it was just like a lot of foreign, like, I don't know. That, I just, just, I'm just done. I'm not sad. I'm not angry. I don't feel any of that. I feel a lot better. Well, I don't feel a lot better. I feel like 30% uh, better. 
Um, and the rest that just needs to be worked out, I guess I'll just have to have that patient process with the Lord and just do this by myself, just me and him. And of course, the people he showed me he's going to use. So maybe he just always wanted to do it that way. So I'm here now. I'm here with Mel. She's one of the many people that he's shown me in dreams that uh he's going to use to, you know, provide healing for our fragments and stuff like that. So some of the people I haven't even met yet that I saw. But I'm done with deliverance ministry. Not me being used at some point for deliverance. Because when I, when I finally get to that point, I'm not going to play any games with people. I don't have time for that. But when it comes to the expectancy and the, the hope and the love for deliverance from what I did, no. No. <laughs> just, no. Just, just no. And God bless all the people who are in deliverance ministry that are really doing a mighty work for the Lord. Um, but I just feel like I keep going to counseling sessions, like hypothetically speaking, and I get nothing from the counselor or the psychiatrist. Like, that's just how I feel. Just like, all right, well, this is pretty much it for me. I'm going to just go back and just deal with this by myself with the Lord. And maybe it really is just, I don't know what to make of this, to be honest with you, because I actually got confirmation from the Lord to go to her. Or I believe I did anyway. Or a piece about it. Because I was concerned and I prayed about it one day. And he answered exactly what I asked him to do. So I'm actually kind of confused of why more didn't come out of this session. I prayed over it like six times. So I, I don't know. I really don't know. But unless he wants to send me to somebody else. I'm pretty much done looking for help um, elsewhere. I'm pretty, I'm not doing it anymore. Like ever in life. And I mean that. So you can learn from these channels. You can learn from the people when they talk about all that stuff. But going to them, um, I don't know. Pray about it. I'm pretty much done. <laughs> so you're probably not going to hear me vent or rant about deliverance ministries charge anymore because i honestly don't even care about the room of deliverance ministry anymore like I, I'm, I'm literally taking my attention off of it like that's y'all thing do what you gotta do pimp your your hoes make your money do whatever you need to do i don't even care because i'm not gonna be going to y'all anymore so the videos are up there whatever um so but i guess lastly i would just share um all of the depression that y'all have seen me going through like for the past few weeks or the past month that I have uploaded 100% due to generational spirits as soon as the uber guy came to pick me up from my house to take me to the airport this morning well yesterday morning y'all I literally felt I don't want to say I felt something break off of me I felt like something like I was released from something and my my true personality came out to the surface my core came out i was comfortable confident i was talking to the uber guy i was talking to people at the airport like i just felt like okay so basically all it took was for you to leave it's definitely 100 percent spiritual but i mean i'm gonna leave those videos up because i just want y'all to see the toxic hell that i have to deal with in that house and how there's a complete shift in difference when i leave and it is due to that woman and just just the bondage and i don't oh jesus christ i just i grieve i thought they i even have to go back there this is my transition season the lord is moving me out but he he didn't specify where i was going he did uh show the school thing in that one dream but i don't think the school is anytime soon he could maybe he maybe want me to start later this year i really don't know he hasn't gotten back to me about that at all with school like nothing so it's just kind of on the shelf really maybe not the right season but yeah I felt that when I got in that car and I was like oh so and I've, I've experienced that actually quite a few times where um I've gotten out of the house and just kind of gotten around other people or just you know certain situations and the person you think you are when you're locked up in that room is not who you really are and that comes out a lot I'm more vibrant and more talkative just just whatever and it just really like reaffirms that that place is just bondage and whatever spirits that, that woman is dealing with is basically what's been afflicting you and um yeah so i feel a lot better obviously um i just i don't even want to think about that house i don't know what i'm gonna do like i hate the fact that i even have to go back there to be honest 
I just pray that the Lord just delivers me out soon or just, just I mean, give me some direction of what step to make or when I'm leaving. It's like he's not saying anything. And now I'm getting pissed off and becoming angry. I don't want to kill my own vibe, so I'm going to change the subject. Um... I'm just waiting for the day where, honestly, I can just leave and never have to see these people's faces again. I stand by that, and I haven't left yet, so I can't cut off everybody the way I really want to. But that's my plan. That's always been my plan. They are abusive, Jezebelian, narcissistic handlers, and even after I left, they were calling my phone, harassing me, my dad harassing Just It's the weirdest, like... It's those spirits, it's those like territorial spirits, but they're using them. Like they, It's like they were trying to follow me wherever I was going, and that's always been my experience. Anytime I've left the house, those spirits just keep following me wherever I go. And uh, it's, it's just that, that childlike infantilization again, you know, asking me, oh, did you bring your coat? Did you like, what does it matter if I'm 26 years old? I don't need you to check with me about a coat. Like, I had to literally tell this woman, if y'all call my phone again while I'm out, while I'm down here, I will block your number. Like, don't call me. I don't want to, I don't want anything to do with you, period. But I definitely don't want you, I don't want any part of you here with me. It, it's, it's just that weird mental illness, like, you know, oh, God, it's disgusting to even talk about this. Like, only y'all who are dealing with this spiritually know what I'm talking about with those, uh dealing with Jezebel or just those spirits that kind of have been having you like as a territory for years and like when it's time to release you and God has shown me this in dreams like they have meltdowns like the spirits don't want to let you go and they, they utilize the parents or the people around you that the spirits were using the whole time to abuse you to just basically stalk you and it's just this weird you know like feeling of just I mean, the, the infantilization thing is definitely there, too, because, like, you're almost 30, and you still have these people trying to dictate where you go, where, you know, who you're going with, dem demanding what her name is. Like, I don't even really talk to you like that. Like, you've never really any, even been in my life up until this point. And even the little, you know, the little effect that you do have in my life as a dad, you're just abusive and sick, so I don't even know. Like, it's just stupid, weird, ungodly, demonic stuff, y'all. Like... It was weird. It just feels like, I feel like a slimy spirit when that stuff happens. And I just really want to get away from these people, man. Like, I'm, I'm away now. Like, I'm in a whole other state. But it's just, like, it's not complete yet. Like, I want to sever this for good. Like, I don't ever want to see you again. Like, I hate the fact that my stuff is still there. And I have to go back and go through the whole process of ever seeing you see it's just I'm, I'm I feel negative talking about it I can't even go back to this place right now but I just want y'all to like no like these people are sick man just really really sick it's like when you're there they're your handlers and they abuse you but then when you try to get free or leave they have this false compassion and like you know parental love and care and no, they no, they just want to keep you under their control. That's really all that's about. It's about control. So you put on the false sympathy card. And, well, we're so concerned. We're, I don't want you to be concerned about me. I want to be away from you people so much to the point where if I died in Ohio, I want that to be my business and I don't want you to come to my funeral. Like, that's how much I don't want anything to do with you. It shouldn't be a concern. I don't care about what happens to me. I don't want you to care what happens to me. Like, I want to get the hell away from you. And I don't ever want to see you again. That's what I'm waiting for God to do in my life. So, yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to let that out. I apologize for cussing. I really do apologize. I've been working on that a lot lately. But that is something very strongly in my heart. And that's how strongly I feel it. I want to get away from you permanently for the rest, like, for life. Like, if there is a covenant with you, I want it broken. Like, I don't ever want to see your face again. You will never see my children. You will never be a grandparent to my children. I want you to act as if I never existed once the father finally delivers from me from you like permanently. I don't want any parts of you following me, harassing me, stalking me, abusing me like the narcissist that you are, Jezebel and Ahab. It's sick. So. Can y'all even believe that I have to go back? I can't believe I even have to go back, man. Not anytime soon. I'm not leaving anytime soon. It's just the thought, like... Come on, man.
the Lord needs to do something. I hope he gives me my car down here or something. Like, you need to do something. I don't know. Like, whenever he does it, like, let's just get this move forward with the prophecies, all the dreams, and just finally get out and start life. Because this is, this is, no. 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 I'm sorry. I did not make this, I didn't mean to make this a negative shift. I don't feel negative at all right now. Like, I'm at, I'm gonna have a lot of peace. I, I'm probably gonna go and eat something, but not like I'm chilling. It's just that slimy experience happened where your handlers still tried to leech on to you even after you already left. Like, I'm literally in the airport on the elevator and he's like trying to stay on the phone with me, just find it. was just some spirits just trying to find anything like to. No, there's no attachment for you. Let go and be released into the abyss forever. Leave me alone. I'm not your daughter. I don't want to be. Like, I, if there was a way to divorce your parents, like, I would totally do it. Like, man, leave me alone. You're not even real parents. That's what's so weird about it. It's just those spirits, those handler spirits over you that have been in your life all this time trying to maintain control and bondage over you. That's it. You don't have parents. I don't, sorry, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm just, no. But anyway, that's my little update vlog for y'all. Uh, that's all I want to talk about. I'm not really, like, I'm just chilling right now. I have to pee really bad, actually, so I'm going to get off of here, and I will talk to y'all later.